there, everybody. Today we're going to get really nerdy on tires and rims, specifically how different rim widths affect tire width. This is a continuation of my previous video where I measured the true width of several tires, and I thought I would put in a different variable and switch up the internal rim width to see does the tire get wider, does it get narrower, and a little later I'm going to bust out the laser and we're going to compare the outside diameter of a 26 inch by 2.3 inch tire and compare it with a 650B by 48. They're nominally supposed to be the same, interchangeable. Uh, we'll see how close or how not close they are. So I thought I'd first start off by answering some questions that were raised in the previous video. And the first one is, why do I have ear protection? Uh, I don't know about you, but my air compressor is really, really loud deafening and I like my hearing. I had a bunch of questions about this tool here. This this is the cool stop uh, tire bead jack thingy and this tool is used to only put the tire onto a rim and cannot be used to remove a tire from the rim. That was one question I got. This kind of fork end sits on uh, the rim. This goes around the tire and you use it to easily lift the tire over the bead. As much as possible, you still want to use your fingers and try to avoid using tools, but this, this does make tricky tire rim combinations easier. Another question that was asked was, how does tire pressure uh, affect tire width? And my guess is not terribly a lot once you get into the actual riding tire pressure ranges, <clears throat> but I thought I would try to answer that in this video. So this tire is a Rene Urs. Uh, hump tulips 26 inch by 2.3 and is mounted on the stands wheel here. These are the stands barren. I'm not going to do every single tire pressure, but uh, we'll we'll do maybe two two increments of 10 psi. So first measurement at 30 psi, the widest part of the casing it measures in at 58.6 millimeters. Let's see if I can bleed it off by 10 psi, and we can at least establish a pattern at 21 psi. It measures at it measures out to 58.36 millimeters. So tire pressure does have an effect on the casing width, not as much as you would think. And this is the tire without a load. I think once you put the weight of the, the rider and the bike on this, it'll expand probably more so at lower pressures. But I'm not gonna go into that in this video. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna compare is this tire on this rim compared to another 26 inch by 2.3 inch tire on a narrower rim and see, whoa, and see how the widths change. So just to double check the Rene Urs on a rim with a 35 millimeter internal is just a tick over 58 millimeters wide. This wheel and tire combination is the Ultra Dynamico 26 inch by 2.3 and it is mounted to a wheel by Velo Orange. This is their Voyager rim and the stated internal width of the Voyager is 22, 22 millimeters. So quite a difference from the 35 on the Barons. Interestingly, the tire casing width measures at 54 millimeters. The next thing I'm gonna do is do a tire switcheroo. I'm gonna put the Rene Earth onto the narrower rim and put the Ultra Dynamicos onto the wider rim and remeasure. And we can see how rim width affects tire width with two tires and two rims. Okay, first I'm gonna undo the Rene Urs tire. And I've mentioned this before, but these cool muck-off valves, they, they do have a tool to remove the valve core stem. So not, not necessary to have the stands uh, core remover if you use the muck-off valves. Love these things, super simple. Yay! I'm gonna try to do this without making a hot mess out of everything. Ah, crap. The tires are off. Let's measure the internal rim uh, widths. The Voyagers are 21.75, and the stands are considerably wider, <laughs> 34.78. So fairly close to their stated widths. So I'm gonna mount the tires on the different rims and we'll see how the widths have changed. First, I'm gonna put the Ultra Dynamicos on the stands. I don't know who these people are that say they can mount tubeless and not make a mess, especially when there's already sealant in the tire. Got the Ultra Dam Dynamicos mounted. Let's see that. On the narrower Voyager rim, this measured in at about 54 millimeters, I believe. 
Let's see what happens when it's on the wider rim. Should plump up, I suspect. And it did plump up to 58. So just to, like about 58, 58.2 on the wider rim. So far, it would seem to suggest that, you know, you put a tire on a wider rim and it's gonna make the casing wider. In this case, the width increased by four millimeters. So fairly significant, I would think, especially if you have tight clearances. So now I'm gonna mount the hump tulips on the Voyager, which again are a, a narrower rim. And on the stains wheel, it measured out to just over 58 millimeter. Uh, it's now on the narrower Voyager uh, rim. So let's see what we got here. Trying to find the fattest part of the casing. And it shrunk quite a bit to 52.7 uh, millimeters. Yeah, it's, it shrunk a bit more than the Ultra Dynamicos, and I'm not quite sure um, how to explain that because they were both about 58 mil on the st on the stands rim, but on this one, the the Ultra Dynamicos were 54, and this is considerably this is considerably narrower on the narrower rim. I mean, that's interesting. Not quite sure what that means, but there you go. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do next is switch these tires around and uh, we're gonna bust out the laser and see how they compare uh, to a 650B by 48 tire. They're supposed to be about the same outside diameter. So interchanging them on the bike should yield the same distance from the bottom bracket to the ground because the outside diameter has not changed or has it. Let's find out. So I changed my mind a little bit uh, for this first comparison between 650B versus 26 inch. I'm going to compare it between tires of the same family. So both of these are Ultra Dynamico. So in theory, they should match up pretty well. The 650B Ultra Dynamico tire is the Rose Rosé, and it's supposed to measure out to 47.9999. And uh, the 26 inch is, I think, just their 26 inch tire offering. I think they only have one. So let's turn on the laser and see if they are indeed the same outside diameter. A little jiggle. And I'm gonna position the laser so it just barely touches the top of whichever is the tallest tire. And to my eye, it's just skimming the 650B tire. So hopefully you can see that it's, it's, it's actually just cutting the tread right there. I'm gonna use the caliper here. And it's about, it's a nine millimeter difference. So about a centimeter shorter, the 26 inch tire is. Or if you're not speaking like Yoda, the 650B tire is about a centimeter taller than the 26 inch one. So that's interesting. Cause that means if you have a 650B bike and you decide to swap in some 26 inch by 2.3s, uh, this particular combination, that should lower the bike by half this distance, so uh, five millimeters. Now let's compare it with the Rene Erste tires and see if they're a little bit closer to, um, to matching a 650B by 48. And from the line to top of the tread, to measuring it, the Rene Erste tire on this rim is a little bit closer in outside diameter to the 650B uh, rim and tire combo over there. The difference between the red line to the top of uh, the tallest knob here is only five millimeters. So 2.5 millimeter difference in, in height of bottom bracket once you put this on uh, a bike. I think what I'm gonna do now is uh, swap the tires to the rims and see how rim width affects height. If I put this on a wider rim, Will this uh, lose some height? Tires swapped again. Uh, let's measure the height difference on the Rene Erste first. Again, when it was on the narrower rim, the height difference is only about five mil. <clears throat> so pretty close to having identical uh, outside diameter. Let's see if that changes, however, when it's on the wider rim. We know on a wider rim, it'll get wider. Does that also mean it will get kind of shorter? We shall see. So that's pretty interesting. It actually didn't change a whole lot. I'm getting a reading of 
So if anything, it's actually a little bit taller on the wider rim. Um, yeah, kind of interesting result. Let's see what we get with the Ultra Dynamicos. Ultra Dynamicos on the wider rim, there's a one centimeter difference. Interestingly, on the Voyager rim, the Ultra Dynamico is only six mil shorter than uh, the 650B. So I don't know if we have anything conclusive. There could be some measuring error, uh, but it's interesting to see that on a narrower rim, uh, the overall height diameter of the Ultra Dynamico increased. Where, whereas with the Rene Earth, uh, regardless of whether it was a narrow or a wide rim, the overall outside diameter didn't budge a whole lot, less than a millimeter according to, to this thing. So what have we learned? Uh, changing tubeless tires is messy. Air compressors, very loud. You should wear ear protection. A wider rim does yield a wider uh, casing width. And conversely, a narrower rim yields a narrower uh, casing width. Not a big surprise there. Tire pressure does affect width, but not to the same degree as internal rim width. And I should add that is without any rider weight or bike weight, I suspect that the casing will flare out once you put weight on the tire. And for the last results, I'm not completely sure. I would have thought that the wider rim would result in a vastly shorter tire, if you know what I mean, but wasn't the case, wasn't the case. Again, this is a, a sample size of, of two rims, two tires, and one reference 650V wheel. So, so things are highly dependent on what you're using and you know the accuracy of my measuring. I tried to be as accurate as possible for a lit major. Hopefully five of you found this video interesting or useful and will, will help you make decisions in, in buying rims or, or tires, at least give you some baseline rules so you can anticipate uh, if you have the clearance to run a particular tire. If you like this video, please join us on Patreon, help support the channel so I can keep doing videos like this. Buy some stickers at the gift shop and as always, keep the supple side down.